essentially outlawed Christianity. Uh, Ukraine is, uh, is an Orthodox, Russian Orthodox. Um, that's their whole country is, is Russian Orthodox Christianity. Um, it's a form of Catholicism. Um, and the uh, fellow that we have given a hundred billion dollars to has, has outlawed Christianity. They, they're arresting the priests, they're closing down the uh, um, churches, uh, they're raping the nuns. I don't know. In China, whew, I'll just take a minute on this. I'll, I'll, we've got to, we've got to know how how blessed we are. Amen. We've got to know how blessed we are. It's so important that we know this, and that not only that we know it, but we show it. I was in a bad mood years ago, and a friend of mine at work said, "How are you doing today?" I said, "Fine." He said, "Well, why don't you inform your face?" You know, I used to get mad at a restaurant if things weren't just right. Um, they didn't give them to me the way I wanted them. I, it was, uh, we, um, I don't know, it's not our fault at first. We're people, people are victims of their environment without a doubt. And very few people are blessed by their environment as a child. There's just not that many Cleaver families out there. June and Ward. Very few. I've heard way more horror stories than, you know. But um, that has to pass. That has to pass. When we come to a place where we we are an American Christian. That has to pass. It doesn't stand anymore. I know you got to work through some stuff, and I get that. And, and um, but uh, in China, if you are a Christian, they'll put you in a re-education camp. Australia, Great Britain, United Kingdom, completely post-Christian. 5% of people get up and go to church in, in Great Britain on Sunday morning, and the church is liturgical, um, and, um, well, they've, they've just uh, ordained their first um, transgender woman to the priesthood in, uh, in uh, London last week. We, uh, I have good news for you today, by the way. I just want to share with you. I want to encourage you to understand how blessed we are. And the camera, good morning to the camera. I'm Pastor Bill. This is Thrive Worship Center in Vienna, West Virginia. Um, in just a moment, I'm going to be talking about the things God does for those who love him. And uh, I've got a subtitle to this, which is, When Does God Love You? But it, it's important that we, you know, we look around here and, and many of our other church families in this town, and you drive by on Sunday morning and the parking lot has four cars in it. Um, and there's a reason for that. It truly is. Kyle, pull up the slides of Madonna. This is Madonna. Everybody knows Madonna. We all sang like a virgin when we were kids. Like a virgin. Is that what she sings? This is her depicting on the Vanity Fair uh, magazine, depicting uh, uh, um, 
Jesus. Go ahead, next one. This is her uh, mocking the Last Supper. Uh, you can see the one woman with not much to imagine. They're all women. Uh, they're kissing on <coughs> this is Madonna from Vanity Fair magazine. This, I guess, very recent one. Go ahead, next one. First transgender Lutheran church bishop on hope and equality. Um, I probably should just move on because I'm going to say something and, I'm, and I, it's, I'm gonna, they're going to they'll arrest me. So we're going to move on here. Here's your next one. There she is. Him, he, her. Well, I guess I'm already in trouble. So you say to me, Pastor Bill, what is wrong with this? Everything. Same rugby team. Everything. Everything is wrong with it. Right. Moving right along. Oh, that's it. I got the picture right. of the right. Oh, don't show that yet. But please get rid of that. <coughs> yeah. Save me, Jesus. Come on. I, just... I hope I get emails and letters. Send them. As a matter of fact, if you have an issue with it, somebody watching by the camera, you come here and debate me. My name is Bill, and I'd be delighted to debate you. But you better bring <laughs> this with you. Because I guarantee you, as Kim Jong-un said to President Trump, I got a red button on my desk, and Donald Trump said back to him, I do too, but mine's bigger than yours. <laughs> we are so blessed. We are so blessed. And I, I sat upstairs the other night. Um, I sat upstairs the other night for several hours. And, you know, God, why are 90% of the churches in this town just have a few people? A dozen people. Why? It, it's not new, friends. It's not new. And yet, still, the ego inside of the pastor just, it just, it, it, aches. it aches. What's going on? What is, is the donuts bad? What's going on? No. It is a blank spot in the history of mankind. Let me read it to you. Mary? There are times when we cannot understand why you cannot do what you want to do. There's times when you can't understand it. It's not possible. You know what I want to do? I want a school here. This is me. Just I'm just saying what I want to do. I want to put a play, big playground down there on that flat piece of ground. Or a, a, a pavilion or something. I want this, I, 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 sorry, forgive me, I don't know about you, I, I want this room filled up. Huh? Who said me too? Yeah. We probably all do, wouldn't it be wonderful? And yet, you'll probably notice I put up two barriers on each side of the room. I created two rooms. People think I'm hiding stuff. No, that's not why I did that. I did that because I believe those are going to be bedrooms. In the next year or two or three or four or five, I believe we are going to house children, one for the boys and one for the girls, in that room next door. You say to me, Pastor Bill, you're crazy. Am I? <laughs> That's what I believe. If, now, listen, if that room fills up with people, whoo, hallelujah, bring it, Father God. 
Bring the, the revival. Bring the way we want it. We're ready. We got the band tuned up. Got my guitars all shiny. Uh, look good, don't they? Isn't that pretty? This one here, I just love it. It matches my outfit. Mm -hmm. uh, Do him all things possible. Uh, one way or another, I guarantee you, one way or another, we're going to put people in that room next door. They're going to either be the room filled with people worshiping Almighty God, or the, or the rooms filled with people that have no place to sleep. That kitchen will be running 24-7. You, you guys don't believe me. I, maybe some of you do. Friends, I've been studying this for 42 years. 42 years. When you get an American magazine that puts Madonna on the cover of it, mocking the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says in the end times there will be mockers. Yeah. It, one way or another. Which way? And it's not up to us either, friends. It's not up to us. It's up to Almighty God. What's going to happen is already written. It's, it's right here. It's already written down. You say to me, Pastor Bill, how can we help? Friends, at this point, all you can do is pray. Is that enough? It's more than enough. It is the greatest tool we have to pray and ask the Lord to bring our children, our husbands, and our wives our grandparents to the church house. I know everybody quotes the verse if we pray and we turn back to God, God will I, I know that verse. I I believe I believe it for it one more time. And many other pastors are too. That room's gonna get filled up one way or another. I guarantee it. Oswald Chambers says, There are times when you cannot understand why, you're, why you cannot do what you want to do. When God brings the blank space, I bet you Oswald Chambers wrote this 40 years ago. No, he wrote it in the early 1900s. Uh, he died in 1917. Wow. I guess they saw it coming too. Friends, pastors sit up at night at, at their desks. With just banging their head on their desk, just what? <laughs> if this was a corporation, y'all would have fired me a long time ago. It's true. The blank space may come in order to teach you what sanctification means. Is that room blank? That room is blank. It's empty. Or it may come under or after sanctification to teach you what service means. Or it may come after sanctification. Never run before God's guidance. Never run before God's guidance. We need to do this. We need to do that. We got to have a program. We got to have plans. Spaghetti dinner. We got to play bingo. No, 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 no. 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 We need to pray and say, God, thank you for what you have given us. The word of God, hearts of gold, to sanctify us, Lord. Make us holy. We, with unveiled faces, the sermon last week, are changing into God's image with ever-increasing glory every day. Whatever you do, if there is the slightest doubt, then he is not guiding you. I have no doubt that room's going to fill up. I just don't know with who. I am absolutely certain of it. Why? Because the word of God says so. And when you have an organization in the world today that is run by 
400 megalomaniacs that are billionaires that fly into a little place called Davos and they declare openly on their webpage, look it up, open up their website and read their, read their, uh, who they say they are, read it. They are declaring that in 2030, they are going to reset the world and they're not kidding. The United States government is working feverishly to create a central bank digital uh, currency or CBDC, central bank, bank di digital currency. And they're going to create it. It is happening. This stuff here, <laughs> you ain't going to need this in your lifetime. In your, I'm just going to say in your lifetime. You're not going to need this. Oswald Chambers goes on to say, whenever there is doubt, don't. <laughs> do we have doubts in our lives? What are you doing, Lord? How come my brother don't, won't come to Christ? How come my, my this is happening? Why is this happening and here? And why are the people starving in Somalia? Don't. Just, just stay. In the beginning you may see clearly what God's will is, the severance of a friendship, the breaking off of a business relationship, something that you feel distinctly before God is His will for you to do. You may feel that with all your heart. Never do it on the impulse of that feeling. If you do, you will end in making difficulties that will take years of time to put right. Wait for God, God's timing, to bring it around and He will do it without any heartbreak and any disappointment. When it is a question of the providential will of God, wait for God to move. The other night I wrote this down. Father God, please keep testing me. When you are sure I will be a post-Christian pastor that will stand up to cultural whims and sinners seeking a place to whet their appetites, then bring increase as you will. Can you choose Thrive Worship Center to be a church of new converts? Yes. And he has. Hundreds have knelt right on this spot in the last two to three years. Hundreds. I was here. I witnessed it. Where are they? They were all men and women from prison in a recovery program and they either relapsed or they went home. Where are they? Are they saved? I don't know. I hope they went home and found a church. But we did God's will. I would be so bold as to say, I, whew, this is a bold one, but I would be so bold as to say that more men and women have been born again right there in the last three to four years than most churches in the United States of America. It, Sherry, am I right? Michelle? Mark? We will continue, this is my prayer to God, we will continue to prepare ourselves for whomever you lead to this house. 
honorous God with many that are ready to be faithful and true to Jesus. There's a lot of people out there, friends, that will tell you they believe in God. They do not believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It's one thing to say you believe in God. Everybody believes in God. Satan believes in God. But do you listen to me on the camera? Do you believe that before the foundation of time, before the universe existed, going back into eternity past, is, is eternity future, do you believe that Almighty God was present with the Holy Spirit and with Jesus, either in spirit form or in body form? It doesn't matter to me. Do you believe that God is three in one, indivisible? Do you believe that? And do you believe that Almighty God left his throne in heaven in the form of incarnation and that he placed his DNA into the womb of Mary, a virgin little Jewish gal. Do you believe that that baby that was born was God? Even with Almighty God on the throne in heaven. And when Jesus lived his life and died on the cross and ascended into heaven do you believe that almighty God then sent the comforter the Holy Spirit of God with Jesus in heaven almighty God in heaven the Holy Spirit here three in one do you believe that it's one thing to say I believe in God everybody believes in God they ask people if they're going to go to heaven. You know what they'll say? Yeah, sure, I'm going to heaven. I think so. I hope so. Go ahead and ask them. Go out there and ask people what they think. Honor us with many that are ready. <laughs> oh, I like this. Thank you, Lord. Honor us with many that are ready to be faithful and true to Jesus. Faithful and true to Jesus. If you read the second and third chapter of the book of Revelation, which says that those that read the book of Revelation, God will bless them if you read it. Uh, that, listen to me on the camera. Take it out and read it after you're done watching. In the second and third chapter, the entire epoch of history, of every church in history, was described in these seven churches. And we are at the last one. But just before the last one, before that time in history, came this little church called Philadelphia. And they're all over the nation. We don't know where they are, but there's one right here. Jesus said to them, you are weak. You are little. You are just a, a small group of people, but you are faithful. <laughs> you are faithful. I would rather be in a church with 15 faithful people than a church with 10,000 seekers any day of the week. I'm too old to deal with all that hogwash. I don't want to. Let me give you some good news too. Jesus said, because you are faithful, I will keep you from the hour of trial that has come upon, that it's going to come upon the world. Doesn't say rapture you, doesn't say remove you and take you to, to Beetlejuice. It says, I will keep you. Does that mean rapture? Maybe, maybe not. Don't know. But it does say, I will keep you. And the Word of God says that we are not destined for the wrath of God. Friends, this world has never seen the wrath of God. We've seen the wrath of man plenty of times. Stalin, Lenin, Hitler, Mao Zedong, Pol Pot, Rocket Man over there in North Korea. 
We see the wrath of man, but who do you want to name? I'm talking to the camera again, friends. Who do you want to name that has murdered 60 million babies since 1970? 60 million babies. What is his name? You know what his name is. What's his name, Chip? The world. Yeah, it's true. Many may come and go, but the few that stay will be ready for the storm on the horizon. Oh, Bill, do you have to do this doom and gloom thing? Look, friends, I didn't say when it's coming. But you'd have to be in a coma to not see that there is trouble on the horizon and it is greater than anything we've seen in our lifetime. Is there anybody in this room that would disagree with that? I hope not, because I don't want to debate you. It's true. I told you the story of when I was on the hillside in 1998 in California, fighting with God, <coughs> shouting at him. Fit, Man, I was... I knelt down on that piece of dirt on that hill and I said, that's it, I'm not moving until you lift any any fear, any depression from me. I will not move from this spot. I will die here. And I, a cloud came right in front of me up in the sky. A big black cloud. It just... And I'm looking down, and God said to me, look up. And I looked up, and I was looking right at that cloud. And God said to me, I don't know if it was an audible voice, I don't know. But God said to me, there is a storm coming on this nation. And I'm going to use you and others to lead tens of thousands of people to Christ. How many others are there? There's a lot, friends. Mario Murillo, is anybody listening to him? I mean, there's stuff going on all around the country, but we don't know about it because we're too busy. So we we don't know that, that there's, there's stuff happening all around the nation, the United States of America. The Lord is using people to lead people to Christ. Why? Friends, that storm has not come yet. But I guarantee you that cloud is nearly over us. I guarantee it. Make Thrive Worship Center a place where saints are challenged to mature and bear good fruit. Where the sinner experiences the conviction of the Holy Spirit where the righteous are shown the righteousness of Jesus. This is my prayer I wrote the other night. And Jesus alone, <laughs> there is no one righteous. No one. The Pope. Uh, I'm, I'm learning all about Pope Francis. One billion people following him. The other day he said that homosexuality is not a crime. He said it is a sin. But he implied that it was something that must be embraced in the future. Look it up in the news. Pope Francis met with a council of uh, priests and Buddhist monks and Islam uh, imams from all over the world just several months ago they wrote a, de a declaration of coexistence they are building in a, 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 an Arab country I don't know which one it is they are building three um, beautiful buildings one of them is a synagogue one of them is a uh, I guess a Catholic church and one of them is a mosque they've put them on this is happening friends you think I'm nuts. It's happening. They are putting up the bricks. 
They have gone, the same group of people went to the top of, uh, or as close to the top of Mount Moriah as they could get, because the Temple Mount is on the top of Mount Moriah, and they formed ten new commandments, all of them having to do with the, uh, the, the apologizing to God because of the emission, the carbon emission, where we have hurt Mother Earth. Y'all, this is happening. The leader of the Roman Catholic Church. Please, look it up. I'm, I'm not being mean. I, I'm telling you facts. I'm sure Pope Francis is a wonderful man. Friends, the Bible says to call no man father. There is one father, your heavenly father. His name is Jehovah. His name is Adonai. church where we fear judgment and wrath to a point where we pray you would make us bold in our testimonies this is for all of us and stand strong in the face of Satan let us continue to be the church of Philadelphia until you return in glory Father God, let us be the church of Philadelphia. What does that mean? I wrote a sermon. It's right here. I swear. I Probably not going to get to it. What, what does it mean to be the church of Philadelphia? And And... Now that I've, I've really opened up this Pandora's box, I'll go ahead and, and let everything come out of it. Do y'all, I beg you, look up Connor, Carter Conlon. Carter Conlon, please look this man up. Carter Conlon. I put my drink. Listen to any one of his sermons. He's the pastor of Times Square Church in New York City. That's the church that was founded by David Wilkerson. Everybody knows who David Wilkerson is. I'm, I, I trust you know who he is. If you don't, David Wilkerson is the man that went to New York City into the gangland and said, Father God, use me to change this. And, and God did. God used us to change the, uh, the, the cloud of apathy uh, rebellion that is over this valley. There is a cloud of apathy and rebellion over this valley. It's true. You know, every day of the week you can roll into McDonald's, you'll be ten cars deep in a line. Can I get an amen? It's true, isn't it? Go there on Sunday morning. <laughs> Ain't nobody there. Years ago, I used to drive the 405 freeway, the 5 freeway to go to church. During the week, I spent I spent eight hours a day in my car in Southern California. I was a sales rep. I would maybe see two clients. Two, I'd go to hospitals. That's how much time I spent in the car because of the traffic. Sunday morning, we go to church. There's not one car on the dark freeway. <laughs> it's like, where, where is it? Oh, we're already in church. No, you're not. You're in bed. Carter Conlon shared something, and I'm going to close with what he shared. <laughs> oh, you're, he, it's, I, I'd like to display one of his videos here, but we're waiting for a piece of equipment that'll make our 
computer sends sound to the speaker. We, we just got to find it. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and after being gathered together to him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed either by a spirit or a spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come, not is coming, but has already come. Paul was telling the, this congregation in Thessalonica, relax. Jesus has not returned yet. They expected Jesus any day. And we should too. Jesus could come back any moment. You say they've been saying this for a hundred years. Yes, it's true they have. And praise God for it. Because when we consider the fact that there's a possibility that in the blink of an eye, in the fraction of a second, we can go from mortal to immortal, standing before the Bema seat of Christ, and Jesus is opening up the books. You say, Pastor Bill, I thought my sins were forgiven. They have been. Your sins are not in that book. <laughs> what you didn't do for the name of Jesus Christ in your lifetime, that's what is written in that book. And the Bible says that we will weep. We will weep. We will, oh my God, I'm sorry. How, how did I miss that? How, what happened? Jesus, and Jesus is going to say to you, I had all these things for you to do. I had these marvelous, I had them all teed up for you. Yesterday we walk into Schaefer's Leather. That little lady standing there looking at me. She was hungry. She wanted to know if she was saved. She, I, 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 the, the, there was people around. She's looking right at me. Bam. I, hey, t Pastor, tell me, am I okay? We went out to visit somebody. It was several weeks ago or a month ago, Michelle and I. She wanted to make sure that she didn't need to get baptized. She didn't know. Friends, they don't know. Go ask them. They don't know. They do not know. I know God. I know God, really. Are you born again? Well, sure I am. I got baptized when I was seven years old in the first Baptist church out there in Logan Run, Ohio. No, are you born again? Are you filled with the Spirit of God? Have you fallen upon your knees? Have you, have you, have you, as an adult, have you wept before God, God Almighty, the God who created the heavens and the earth? Have you said, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Oh. Oh. Hallelujah. 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 Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed. We have a, do we have rebellion in America right now, friends? Yes. <laughs> you can't tell a little kid what to do. They'll, t they'll call the cops on you. Hateful. It's unbelievable. What's going If you're a school, I know school teachers that do not want to be school teachers anymore. They, the whole, Mary. And you're at Catholic school. At least there's some order in there. Am I right or wrong? The man of lawlessness is revealed. What does revealed mean? Chip, what does revealed mean? It means they're showing something. You can see them. You know they're there. Revealed. That's what it means. Chuck Smith says the Bible says what it says. The son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God and object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God proclaiming himself to be God. 
Where's the statue, the golden statue picture? Please? I, beloved, I, I had a feeling I was going to go here this morning, so I prepared. Hey, go read that. That is a depiction of Ruth Ginsburg. That is how they've honored her. That statue is eight feet tall. They have they have set it on top of a, of a New York City courthouse, right down the, the right down the thing from Moses. That is a gold statue. She's naked, completely. You don't see particular. <laughs> Whatever, but you know what I'm saying. She's got horns coming out of her head, her braids. Apparently, Justice Kimberg would braid her hair. Out of her arms are the tentacles of the, uh, of the desire to control and kill. That's on a, that's on a, a, a courthouse in New York City. You watching by camera? If you're in New York, I got a suggestion for you. Get out of New York. Because Almighty God is going to bring his judgment on New York City. When? I don't know, but I'm telling you, it's coming. It's coming. When the public approves. New York City was the first state to approve abortion. New York City is the number one abortion capital of the world besides China. We don't know how many babies are aborted in China because China doesn't tell anybody anything that we really need to know. <laughs> New York City is the first state in the United States of America that approved full-term abortion. And if you don't know what full-term abortion is, I'm not going to describe it. I don't want to make anybody vomit in here. But I, the baby's alive. The baby is alive, and they kill it. They, it's a partial birth. They deliver part of it, and they kill it. That's correct. They celebrated that by turning the... Uh, the big building, United Empire building, whatever it's called. They lit it up in glory. They celebrated it. Yes, we get to murder children now. Speaking of children, that sounded bad, whatever happened up there. <laughs> do you think, do you think that America? Are we in rebellion? We are at level 10 rebellion. Last night, two nights ago, protests all over the United States of America. It was about racism. And no racism occurred. The young man who was beat to death by the police officers, all five of the police officers were African American. They, the news has already turned it into an act of racism. Protest. Everybody wants to protest. Antifa is on the move again. Antifa is going to emerge in 2020, late 2023 and into 2024. Antifa is funded by George Soros. Who knows who George Soros is in this room? Be beloved, please learn. Open your eyes. They ran ads in magazines every place there was a protest, hiring actors and paying them $15 an hour to be protesters. They bust them in. That's rebellion. But the greatest rebellion of all in the United States of America is the rebellion of Christians who will not serve God. Now, I understand if you're elderly, if you're infirm, and we'll come to you. I understand that. But there's no reason in the world for young people, 2% of all the millennials in America, 
will look you in the eye and say to you, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. 2%. There's 130 million of them. There are 77 million baby boomers my age in America, those that really got the whole secret sensitive thing going in the 60s and 70s and 80s. Only 30% of them will attend a church today. In this town, in this town, So what does Paul say in my remaining four minutes? He says, do you remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and you know what is restraining him now so that he may be revealed in his time? Now, I'm reading an English Standard Version, but if you open up a King James Version, the word he is not capitalized. Friends, my world got rocked the other day when I heard this, and I think it's true. I, I'm, I'm totally open to new interpretation of Scripture to the point to say, maybe I was wrong about something. But there's a grand debate as to whether it's the Holy Spirit or it's the body of Christ. Connor, Carter Conlon taught something the other day that blew my mind. I think it, it's, I think it has... Uh, validity the Holy Spirit for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work listen only he who only he who now restrains it will do so until he's out of the way did you hear that only he who restrains it where does the Holy Spirit live Christina, where does the Holy Spirit live? In your heart. Yeah. Period. If you say you're a Christian and you will not look at the camera and say the Holy Spirit of God dwells within my heart. I may be a sinner of sinners, but the Holy Spirit, and it's not because of anything I've said or done. It's because Almighty God chose me before the beginning of time. He said to me, Bill, I know someday you will fall upon your knees. I'm going to help you. <laughs> but you will fall upon your knees and you will repent of your sin and you will ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart. That's a Christian. The Holy, the, the, he may be revealed in his time. You know what is restraining him now that he may be revealed to him. The mystery of lawlessness. Only he who restrains it now will do so until he's out of the way. Friends, in 1940, 50, a Sunday morning, I guarantee you this whole town was going to church. They were in their Sunday best. There's all these beautiful churches downtown. You've seen them. You know what I'm talking about. After church, they'd have some lunch. They'd go shopping at, at all the nice stores were downtown. I don't know. There's nobody here old enough to know what that looked like, but that's exactly what it looked like. Where did they go? What took them out of the way? Satan. Friends, yeah, Satan. Friends, the restrainer, is it possible that the restrainer is, is us and those of us, not us in this room, but the body of Christ, the devil has just taken them right out of the way? You don't need to go to church. You don't need to go to church on Sunday morning. It's not necessary. You need to go to Sunday school. You don't need to come to Monday prayer. You don't need to help it. What do you just? Would you, why don't you just do this? Watch TV and and go to the ballet and blah 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 and go to the restaurant. You don't need it. That, friends, is it possible that the body of Christ itself is being taken out of the way? And for every Christian that falls by the wayside, Hebrews chapter 6, those who have been enlightened and have rejected that which they have fed on, they have received, they have been blessed by, they reject it, there is no repentance. There's no repentance. You say, Pastor Bill, I thought God will forgive anybody. He will. They won't want to repent. I know people that will not repent, and they know Jesus is the Son of God, but they will not repent. Why? Because they've been taken out of the way. Is it possible that that's what Paul was writing about? 
I think it's possible. I'm going to close today with, now that I've thoroughly probably bombed everyone out. <laughs> I hope I have. I, I love you guys. I want you, every one of you, including Kyle back there, <laughs> I so badly want you to not only be filled with the Holy Spirit, I know all of y'all are, I, I pray you are. If you're not, please raise your hand. Let's get this, let's get it done. Amen. But also to be able to, to move in the gifts of the Spirit, to be filled with joy. That Jesus says that He wants our joy to be complete. But you've got to have hope. You've got to have hope for the future, but you've got to know what the future holds. And I know that the future holds heaven for you. I understand that. The Bible says that your inheritance is laid up for you in heaven. God is watching over it, and he's going to reveal it to you in his good time. I understand that. But what about here to here? That little space. What are we going to do? We can come to church on Sunday morning and praise God for that. It's wonderful. I hope you're being blessed here. You're being ministered to. It's my... By Arden, who I, I know we, we, we'd like to have more kids running around and we'd like to have more uh, adults and people eating donuts. I get that. I truly do. But you stand alone in your commitment to Christ. Don't let the devil take you away, don't let him. Pray. Every person you see, say, God bless you. Read your Bible every day. Get ready. Get ready. Is, 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 is Jesus coming back tomorrow? I don't know. I hope so. I don't know. But we need to be ready. We need to be ready. Amen. So those of y'all watching by camera, that entire 45 minutes was not planned. I, I pray that it blessed you. If you don't have a home church, then find one. There's probably one across the street from you. There's one, there's one in every corner in Parkersburg and Vienna. Find a church. Number one, make sure that the pastor does two things. Check his knees and make sure there's uh, calluses on them. And number two, make sure the pastor is willing to go to the hospital and visit the sick. And number three, I'll add this one in there too, make sure your pastor is willing to clean the bathroom. Because if the pastor thinks he's so fancy that he can't go to the hospital and pray for the sick and come, come to the church once a month and clean the toilets, then you got, you got some ego going on there. This is not the time for ego, beloved friends. It's not. This is the time for complete surrender. Complete surrender to Christ. All right. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, we need to take an offering. I'm so sorry. I am the... Uh, so, <laughs> Father God, we thank you for this offering.